Hello and welcome to this tutorial to help you learn more about building workbooks reports. In this session we're going to look at how to join data that's stored on different data tables into one report. For example, you might want to send a mail shot to people on your system who are employed by a company in a particular industry sector and that would mean joining together information from people records with data held on an organisation record. Or you might want to find all the opportunities you've got for companies in a particular town and for that you'd have to join together data from opportunities and from organisations. Let's just remind ourselves of how some of the record types in workbooks join together. Here's an example of an organisation record and here's an example of a person record. The employer field on a person record can only be populated with the name of an organisation on your system. Doing this creates an employer-employee relationship between the two. The employer field can be left blank, but if it isn't blank, it must have an organisation name in it. Here's an opportunity record. The prospective customer field on an opportunity can only be populated with the name of either an organisation if you're selling in the B2B world, or a person if you're selling in a B2C environment. In both instances, it creates a prospective customer relationship. And here's an activity record. The primary contact field on an activity can only be populated by the name of a person on your system. It can actually be populated with the name of a lead, but we don't have that shown in the diagram. But either way, it creates a link between the records. Let's take a look at a report that requires a join. Your marketing team want to invite company directors to an event and they've asked you to build a report that provides them with the names, job titles, emails and employers of those people. In addition, they want to know how many of those people are in each industry sector. Hopefully, if you've watched the other tutorials, especially the one about summary views, you'll recognise straight away that in order to generate this report, we'll need a details view and a summary view. Before starting, though, let's take a moment to think about what fields we need to use in our report and where on the system we'll find them. We know that we want the person name, and that's quite straightforward, that's on the person record. We also want the job title, which again is on the person record. Same again with the email address. We know that we want the employer field and this too is on a person record. We need the industry field, we've been asked for that. And I've said here that that's on the organisation record. Now in reality, there is an industry field on the person record too, but very few of our customers use that field, which is why I'm saying that we need to select the value on the organisation record. And lastly, I've said in previous tutorials that it's always good practice to include a unique identifier in your report, so we'll use the person reference, which of course is on the person record. So how are we going to get the industry information from the organisation record? You can see employer is highlighted in red now, because if you remember, people and organisations are joined together using the employer field. There's also a triangle next to the field, and you'll see what I mean when we're in workbooks building this report. You'll see what that triangle represents. Hopefully you can see though that we should base our report on people records because that's where all these fields are, the majority of these fields, and then introduce the industry field from an organisation record. Let's go into workbooks and take a look at how to build this report. So here I am in workbooks and I'm going to build a new report. This time, when I'm creating it, instead of clicking create a new blank report, I'm going to click create a new pre-populated report. We've seen from the slides that we just looked at that we want to start our report based on people. So that's what I'll select here. Give your report a name. And when I click save and refresh, my, load my preview, you can see that because I started with a pre-populated report, there are lots of fields already provided for me and it just makes report building quicker. I can add in more columns or delete any that I don't want, but if I check, this looks pretty good because it's got the person's name here, it's got their email address, it's got their job title, and it's also got the person reference. What it doesn't have though is the employer field, so I'm going to add that. Just starting to type employer. Now you can see there are lots of options here. There's one that says employer, and then there are several that have got employer followed by a triangle, a bit like the one that I just showed you in the slide where. I'm going to choose the one that just says employer and now when I click refresh preview you'll see that the column has been added as you'd expect over on the far right hand side. 
We don't have the column for industry either, so I'm going to click to add a new column. I'm going to start typing employer again. We know that the information about the industry is held on the employer record, on the organisation record, and we know that the join is through that employer-employee relationship. So I'm going to select employer main and that opens up a new field for me. If I click on the down arrow, you can see, hopefully, that there are, it's a list, an alphabetical list of all the fields that exist on organisation records. And you can see that a lot of these options also have right arrows, which would allow us to join onto other record types if we wanted to. We call this approach drilling through, and you'll see these options in all the reports that you build. For us, we want the industry field, so I'm just going to start typing that, and here we go, industry. And again, there it is over on the right hand side. We were asked to find company directors, so you'll need to apply a criterion to focus in on those. Natively in workbooks, and you can see both of them on the screen here, we provide two fields relating to what people do. One is a job title field, which typically shows what would appear on someone's email signature, and the other is a job role field, which is much more to do with the function that they perform. It can be really useful for marketing teams to help segment people into standard groupings rather than relying on the job titles. So in this instance, for my criterion, I'm going to add one that says job role contains director. We've now got a list of directors on our database, but we need to count how many there are in each industry sector for which we're going to need a summary view. All we need to do is count the unique person references for which we need to choose a summarised column. Reference, and instead of the total, we want to count them. We might change this to number. And then just group that by the industry field that we drilled through to on our details report. And there we go. We've got a row for each industry sector and we've got the number of directors employed in those sectors. You'll notice the first row has got nothing written against it, and this, the number 44, which means 44 of the directors on our system are working for organisations whose industry field hasn't been populated. There are lots of situations where you might want to join more than one record together for reporting purposes, and one of the most common is transaction records. Each transaction record has the concept of the record itself, which is often referred to as the header, which is linked to line items, and usually there are multiple line items, so we have the concept of a one-to-many link. On the screen at the moment is a screenshot of the header of an opportunity record, and at the bottom, highlighted in red now, you can see in the analysis section that the net value of the opportunity is £16,850. This is the screenshot of the line items for that same opportunity, and you can see that there are three line items totalling £16,850, which is exactly what we saw in the header of the previous slide. When we build a report for this opportunity that joins the header and the line items together, we'll end up with three rows, one for each line item. It also means that if we use the total figure from the header, the total of 16,850 appears three times and might make users think that the grand total is 50,550. Whereas if you use the value from the line items, you get the correct total of 16,850. If you've watched the other reporting tutorials, you'll know that we've already used the example here of a sales manager wanting to see a report of their opportunity pipeline. And we've already built the details and the summary view to support this. But the sales manager has now said that when they drill into the report, they want to see the details about the line items being sold. This means that we need to amend the details report so that in addition to it showing the assigned to field, the amount, the amount from the header, and the opportunity stage, it also needs to show the product code, the description, and the value fields, the net home currency field, all of which are held on line items, so we'll need to join the two together. Let's move into workbooks to do that. Before editing the report, here's a really quick reminder of how we built it. First, we built a new report by going Start New Report, and we chose a blank report. We gave it a name, click Save. We added in the columns that we wanted, which for us were the Assigned To column, and we changed the title to Sales Rep. 
the amount in home currency, the stage and the opportunity reference. We also applied a criterion to restrict the report to opportunities with a state of open. Next we added in a summary view. We gave it a name and added a split column. For the split column we used the amount in home currency split by the stage and grouped it by the sales rep. Then to finish we added in the totals by using a summarised column to calculate the total of the amount in home currency. So here's our report and if you look in the bottom right you can see that we've got a, a grand total of a little over 4.4 million. At the moment if I were to drill into this I can see the three opportunities here for Caroline Sterling but I can only see four columns of information because that's all we added to our details view. I'm going to edit this report and go to the details tab so that I can add in columns for the line items. Just like we did with the report for directors in different industries we need to join the opportunities to the line items so I'm going to click on add column and start typing line items and there you can see we've got it with that arrow again that allows us to drill through to the table of data about line items. When I click on it it'll open up a new field which it has and here's an alphabetical list of all the fields on the line items table. This particular database has been customised quite a lot so don't worry if you don't see exactly the same values when you do the same in your database. However you will have an option if I type it in for product and that's what I'm going to select right now. Notice there is also an option for product with an arrow which means that if you wanted to you could access fields on the product itself such as the unit but I'm not going to use that I'm just going to select product. Then I'm going to click save and new because we know there are some other fields that we want from the line items so exactly the same approach the line items and then description line description save and new line items and net home currency for this one I'm going to click the display summary checkbox also and put in a total now when I go to my summary view and drill in Hmm, I don't think that figure was like that before, but if I drill into Caroline's Stage 1 opportunities, ah, I'm not just seeing three line items, I'm seeing four lines of information. Because you can see here that Opportunity 319 has been duplicated in effect. What that tells me is that Opportunity 319 had two line items linked to it, and that's why the row has been duplicated. But what I have got now are additional columns for information about the products that Caroline's selling on these particular deals. So I've got the product code, the line description and the value of those line items as well. However, if you look at the grand total now down in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that it shows more than 9.3 million instead of the just over 4.4 that we saw before. And this is because the amount field is looking at the total on the header of the opportunity and using it multiple times, depending on the number of line items in our report. We're going to need to amend the summary view to make sure that it looks at the total value of the line items, not of the header. And it's very easy to do, you just need to know how. So, edit the report. And I'm going to open the amount column, which currently is looking at the amount from the header. Instead, I'm going to change this to net home currency, which was the amount from each individual line item. Save and close that. And likewise on my split column, I'm going to open that one up. And instead of looking at the amount on the header, I'm going to look at the amount on the individual line items and run my report again. Now in the bottom right, you can see that the grand total has gone back down to just over 4.4 million which we know is right because we've already seen that in our report. Let's look now at another example of joining data together. In other tutorials we covered how to build a report for the support manager showing the number of cases of each type that there are for each support analyst. Imagine that the support manager now wants a report showing how many activities there are per case type. Straight away, we know that what we're going to need is a case report that joins information onto activities. Here's the support case report that we built previously, and we can see down at the bottom here that we've got 57 cases. 
Let's edit the report and add in a column to link us on to the activities related to these cases. And I'll put in the activity reference. Remember, all I've just done is add on a link to activity references from the case records, but straight away here we can see that the number of cases has gone up to 111. And that's obviously because some of these cases have got more than one activity. There is a way around this using some more advanced techniques that I'm not going to cover in this session. In addition, remember the support manager wants to look at resolved cases this time, and our existing report looks at open ones. For now then, my advice would be to start a new report, which I'll talk you through quickly. So start new report. I'm going to choose a pre-populated one again just for speed, based on cases. This report's already got the case number in it, but what it doesn't have is any reference to the activity. So I'm going to add a column, start typing activities. There we go, we've got the drill through. And here I'll choose activity reference. Then I'll add my summary view. And this time what I want to use is a summarized column that counts the activity references and group that by the case number. And now I can see how many activities there were per case. If I want to introduce other columns into the report to make it a bit make it more sense, I could use the value column and maybe select something like the summary of the case itself. To finish off then, let's look at some tips to consider when you need to join reports. Like any report, do take some time to plan your report and consider what, if any, joins you need to include. Use that plan to help you decide where you're going to start. For example, if you were trying to report on opportunities without follow-up activities, you shouldn't start with activities as that's only going to show you things that exist, not situations where they don't exist. Instead, start with opportunities and join to activities. You could then do a count of them, just like we did previously with the support cases, and this would highlight the absence of an activity. If you do need to join data together, and it's very common to do so, consider the impact of doing it, just like the impact we saw on the total value of opportunities. The report wasn't wrong, it was just looking at the figures that we'd given it. There are always ways to get to the figures you need, you just need to be aware of that impact. When you want to count things, use a unique reference, such as the object reference or the record ID. And to avoid problems of adding joins to existing reports, maybe the better thing would be to start with a new one, just like we did with the cases and activities report that I just built. So I hope you found that session useful. Thank you very much for watching. If you need more help on reporting, please do go to our knowledge base. You'll find the reporting help at workbooks.com help reporting.